Hi, this is Gail with Bernie and F. Naperville, and welcome to another installment of our Kimber Bell Society. This is May, and May and Mom go together like ham and eggs, right? So we are making a drawstring bag with a cute little applique butterfly with vinyl, and then an open space of like a mesh that's created with thread. And so we're gonna do really reverse applique and regular applique for that. I'm also going to go through showing you how you're going to get your Kimberbell designs each month and I'm going to show you what not to do because that's probably what I'm the best at because you know what I'm not going to lie I make mistakes. I probably don't make one thing that doesn't require me using a seam ripper but this mistake that I make we're going to avoid using the seam ripper so stay tuned for that. So this little drawstring bag we're making the larger version you're going to get two files with your design. You're going to get a 5 by 7 or a 6 by 10. We're making the 6 by 10. So the kit that you get from Bernina of Naperville, if you decide to purchase the kit and the designs from us, um, is going to be enough to make the larger drawstring bag. You can make the largest drawstring bag if you have a Bernina 7 or an 8 series with the maxi hoop. If you have a machine with a smaller hoop like the 5 series with the midi hoop or the 5 series with the large hoop, you're gonna just use the small size. Or the design will fit in the Bernina Mega Hoop, which is this one right here. And you can see there's our Mega Hoop and the design fitting. So this is the large. And then don't forget that you are gonna get instructions with your designs that Kimberbell emails you directly. However, we also have a handout that we kind of give our little two cents, like, you know, the fabrics that we've used in the kit, the um, little uh, threads from Isocord that we've used for that, and just any little extra tips that we found with the project. So you're also gonna wanna download that, and you'll find that in the description of this video and on our website under Kimberbell Society. So, are you ready? Ah, are the sleeves rolled up to make this cute little drawstring for mom to put her Werther's original candies in? <laughs> or jewelry, <laughs> or business cards, or USB sticks, or I'll get started. Before we get started, let's just take a minute to look at how you're going to receive your Kimber Bell designs every month. Because remember, when you get your little kit from us, you don't get a USB stick with the designs. It comes emailed to you. Let's have a look at that process. So once you purchase your kit from us, you are obviously, you're gonna receive a kit in the mail from Bernina of Naperville, but there's a digital downloadable file that comes from Kimberbell. And so what I wanna remind you is that this email doesn't say, hey, congratulations, you ordered something from Bernina of Naperville. Here is your design for April. It doesn't say that. It comes from Kimberbell and it'll say something like a uh, reminder you have received a digital dealer exclusive product or it's going to say something like that. So go ahead and click on that and then you're going to scroll down and in my case it says taco cord organizer. Don't get excited. This is just something that I need because we're going to make this one day, right? But you're going to scroll down and you're gonna just download now. So I'm gonna click that button that says download now. And I download a lot of stuff. You can see all my stuff down here, but I have to create a Kimberbell login and password, but I want you to please note that this gail at berninaofnaperville.com, I can't use this because this is my business email for them. I'm actually creating an account like you're gonna create an account with the email address that you wanna receive your files. Whatever email address you've provided Bernina of Naperville, we are gonna provide Kimberbell to get your designs. You also have to have a, a login generated with Kimberbell. So if you need to create an account, if you've never ordered anything from Kimberbell before and that kind of thing, you're gonna create a new account by clicking here and you're gonna give your email address, you're gonna do a password, confirm the password, and you're going to consent to receive updates and emails if you want, and also text messages if you choose to go that route. Now, if you already have 
an account with them, like I have a personal account with Kimber Bell, you're going to make sure you enter that information in, type in your password, and then log in. And then once you log in, you can see the latest downloads or the oldest and all of that, but we can see the brand new one here is this particular design, and I'm just going to download it. And while it downloads, it's going to download into my downloads folder. It's coming in there and it comes in zipped. And so once it's downloaded, I can go to my downloads folder and you can see there's our download folder. And I'm just going to take this and I'm right clicking to make a copy. And then I'm going to put it in my embroidery designs folder and I'm going to call it, I'm going to make a folder here called Kimberbell. And you can put your file wherever you would like to keep it on your computer. And now I'm going to paste this. And now there's my design. Now you'll notice that this folder has a little zipper on it. I can't just use these files. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to extract. And I'm going to extract it right to this folder. And then what happens is I get another folder that doesn't have a zipper on it. So I'm going to select, once I extract it and get that regular folder out of there, I'm going to click this zippered folder and delete it. And now I can access this file and get my designs out of there. Well, what's in the kit this month? It is the cute little ingredients for our May Kimberbell Society. So here's what we're making. It's a drawstring bag, all done in the hoop. We're gonna be working with some vinyl. We're gonna be working with water-soluble stabilizer to create that mesh. We're also going to be creating a little casing and a drawstring. And this month, there's a little bit of sewing. So in your kit, you're gonna get some little crocheted edge ribbon for the drawstrings. You get two pieces. You're going to get your water-soluble aqua mesh stabilizer that is going to fit in your hoop. You only need one piece. Uh, there is part of the instructions that call for a topper, and that's what this is. This is stitch 2-0. And then we have the um, upper wing fabric. We have the vinyl. We have the outer bag fabric. This is what we're going to be embroidering on and the other side, outside piece of the bag. And then this is the lining. And then we have some fusible woven, but you have a little bit more than you need this month. This is only going to go on the backside of our mint fabric this month. So the bag's not going to get it, just the outer side of that piece. So I think we have just about everything that came in the kit. Now, of course, we do not include the threads each month, but I always tell you what threads we're gonna be using. And also, don't forget that we have an additional handout that we provide with each month's Kimberbell Society, where every time we reference a certain thread, I'm gonna make sure that I write that correct thread number on there for you. So from the Isocord 40 weight thread, we are using color number 4174, 0520-5115-0003 and 4515. Now, those of you that are doing our embroidery sampler program, <laughs> you have a couple of these already. Maybe you could spare a little thread for this project. <laughs> All right, let's get everything hooped up. Once you get your embroidery files loaded onto your machine and everything's ready, we're going to hoop up one layer of stabilizer and this month I'm using the Maxi Hoop. The Maxi Hoop is the largest size hoop that you can get for a Bernina 735, 720, 770 plus or non plus, 790 plus and of course the 700 embroidery only machine. So this is all ready to go and now let's get this baby on the machine and do the things. The design is locked and loaded and as we know from last month, sometimes it can be a super fun task to change all of those colors of the thread. So let's go over to the Bernina embroidery software 
and look at each one of our embroidery designs that you get emailed to you and what the different file extensions mean and why you want to actually pick an embroidery design that is .art and then send it over to your stick as an exp. All right, I'm going to open my design for my Kimberbell project and there are two designs of different sizes in each folder. So you get your folders and you'll get something with embroidery files on it. And there's all these different files. There's art files, there's DST, those are like industrial machine folders. The EXP files are what you're going to open. If you literally want to drag here, these two pieces onto a USB stick that's on your machine. HUS is for Viking. JEF, I believe, is for Janome. PES is for like brother. VIP is also, I think, like Viking or something like that. XXX is singer. So, you know, if you have a non Bernini, you'll recognize some of those other file extensions. Now, sometimes when you open up an EXP file, your machine is going to pop up with a notice that says, hey, this isn't a grade A or B file. Do you still want to open it? And that just means there's going to be some limitations in scaling. And that's it. Now, we're not really enlarging or reducing our project, so it doesn't really matter that much. Let's go ahead and open another design. So that was the small design that I just opened. So now let's go over here to our art file and open the large size. And because this wasn't created in Bernina Embroidery Software, you're still gonna get that warning with the art file. But I also wanted to kind of show you that this is the smaller version of the design and it is in the mega hoop here. There's our mega hoop. And here is our larger design here. And we can pick our, like I said, I'm working in the maxi hoop this month. So we can see the maxi hoop there if we zoom to hoop. We can just fit this in the mega hoop if you really wanted to use a mega hoop. So I just wanted to show you, but see how it's really, really close there? Nonetheless, it doesn't really matter what hoop as long as it fits, right? <laughs> so I changed some of my colors here to different colors that I wanted to use for the file. So the first thing I do is just zoom in a little closer because my eyeballs can't see this. And then I'm going to unshow artistic view by clicking on this icon. That means that when I click something here, it's going to show me exactly what I'm selecting. Now in each one of these, this is going to be all the same color until I get to this color right here. And there's different file managements that you can do. You can do this right on your machine like we did last month. And you can just refer to the April Camberbell Society piece to see how to change your colors in the machine. But I just wanted to show you this month how you would do it by the machine. So if we wanted to get really fancy, what we can do is go here to our design and our thread colors. And we can scroll up and the first color I'm going to be using from my Isocord shades. And this is color number going to be color number 0003. And then I'm going to assign it. And also color number two is going to be white. And color number three is going to be white. And then once we, and we're going to go ahead and say apply and okay. And once we want to just do a preview here, once we get to color number six is where we want to change it to a different color. So let's go back up here to our design and thread colors. And color number four is going to be that 0003 again. And we're going to assign it and we're going to assign it to five. Now color number six is going to be 0520 and now we're going to assign that one and I believe color number seven is also this color and then I'm just going to apply and okay again 
so I can get down here and scroll a little bit ahead because sometimes I can't remember the order of things. And so now that we get into color number eight, Color number eight is going to be our 5115, and we're going to assign that one. And color number nine is the color. Color number 10 right here is going to be 4515, so we're going to assign that one. Five, okay. And then finally, there's the bug body and the rest of the designs. After the bug body, everything becomes that ghost white again. So let's open up our design again, red colors, scroll up, find our bug body. It's number 11. And that one was 4174 and a sign. And now everything else is just going to be 0003, a sign. A sign, a sign. All right, so now I can apply and hit OK. And now you can see that our design has changed quite a bit here. Our little drawstring slits are going to be white, all the top stitching and all the construction areas are going to be white. So now I'm pretty happy with this, and now I can go ahead and select my right to the machine, pick my EXP, send it to my stick, and then put my stick in my machine. So I've wound a bobbin of the ghost white, that's the 0003, and this is going to stay in my bobbin the whole embroidery design. I think this is going to be fine to sew our drawstring bag together, and it's also going to be fine for the bobbin thread for this. Now I am going to wind a quarter of a bobbin full of 0520, but that's only because we have some freestanding mesh. So the only time that I'm going to change my bobbin here is when we switch it to this to do the yellow part. But then once that yellow is done, we go back to our white right there. If you have a Bernina 880, 830, 880 plus, we're going to thread the bobbin for embroidery for the first few stitches. I'll make sure I tell you when not to thread for embroidery. And uh, for those of you that have a Bernina 5 through 7 series machine, you're simply gonna just use the same bobbin case throughout the whole thing. But you will want to loosen your upper tension in certain areas. So I'm going to get my hoop on my machine and the first few stitches are just simply going to be placement stitches and things like that. And our first stitch is just literally going to tell us where to put our outer fabric. So we're going to go ahead and thread up our machine with our ghost white thread, that 0003. And sometimes when I'm just stitching on the stabilizer for a placement line, I like to hold my upper thread, touch my needle up down button, Pull my bobbin thread up to the top and just hold for a second while I get started. A little bit of expert tape. This is um, just like a tear away sticky back stabilizer in tape form, but it's really handy to hold these pieces into place in the hoop, especially when they're just like laying here and they're not hooped in. So once you cover those stitching lines that were just created, you're going to go ahead and stitch the next color, color number two, in the same color that we're using here. All right, so the next color is just going to be another placement line. So we're just gonna stitch this out with our same white thread. For color number four, we're gonna stitch down that light mint color that's been cut to size with the fusible backing. That's our fusible woven on the back that you got in your kit. And we're gonna just line this up and cover 
that little butterfly wing just like that and now let's stitch. If you need, you can unclip the hoop from the machine to trim this. And I'm using my sharp Karen K. Buckley scissors that are bent and serrated that really help me get in here to trim. And we wanna go really close to that stitching line. And now we do thread color number five. Now thread color number five is actually the 0520 in yellow. And you know what that means? That means it's time for us to switch out our bobbin to that yellow as well. And now no fabric goes on top of this. We're just simply gonna stitch. All right, so for this one, we need to trim the inside fabric in that perimeter stitch. We just have to be very careful to not trim the stabilizer underneath. We wanna keep that aqua mesh under there. And now it's time for color number six, where we're gonna stitch our grid. Now this is gonna stitch a grid, kind of like lace work, and it's gonna just build a foundation, and our little bag is actually gonna be washed to get all of the water soluble out at the end, and that will leave this yellow stitching grid in a transparent fashion. Now the machine takes a stop after it completes the grid, but we can go ahead and just press the button again because we keep the same thread in the top and in the bottom for color number seven. Now it's time to change the bobbin thread again back to our white. And now this is simply a placement stitch for where to put our vinyl. Now our vinyl makes an appearance and we're gonna cover all of that stitching on the butterfly and we're gonna use our expert tape to tape the vinyl into position. And now color number nine. We made an oops. Can you imagine what the oops might be? Don't forget to put down your topper before you put down your vinyl. Now, we can fix this because I caught it soon enough, but I'm doing this because I know you're going to forget. So before you put the vinyl down, you're going to put your topper down. The, the how I'm gonna fix this, so I'm just gonna pull this out of the machine and just temporarily take my tape off there. And I'm gonna pull this back and I'll explain because the topper is really so you don't cut through the satin stitching when you're doing this. So I'm just gonna to try to be very clever in where I line this up under my butterfly. It's not ideal, but you know what? We caught it in time and that's what's important. So. This is just yet another lesson, ladies and gentlemen, in why I screw up on purpose so that you will not make the same mistakes as me. So I've taken it off the machine, but it's still in the hoop. That's important. <laughs> and so now I can kind of get in there and really trim the vinyl smooth and nice. So I just wanna get in here and round this little piece just a little bit more. And maybe go in just a little closer up here at the top of the wing.
And sometimes I think it's easier to kind of turn the hoop as I'm cutting to get a nice, clean, smooth cut. And now we can gently peel the topper off. So now for our color number 10, which is the Isochord 4515, you could have left the topper in when we embroider these little dots on the wings, but I opted to remove mine at this stage. The last color in our embroidery piece is our 4174 for the butterfly body. For the 880 plus, we're going to unthread the bobbin for embroidery and thread it for regular sewing. And then for all Berninas, we're going to loosen the tension. The upper left-hand corner of your sewing screen. And we're gonna go to about 475 or 4.75 right there. And we're gonna say, okay. And now let's just stitch our little drawstring markers. Per the instructions, you are to use a seam ripper to cut open gently these little markers. Now this, like I said, is uh, kind of just a embroidered buttonhole there. But when I use a seam ripper to cut open a slit like this, I use a straight pin to kind of pin my piece across the bar tack there so that when I insert my seam ripper, I don't cut into those stitches. Let's talk about the lining material for a minute. This is what we chose for the lining. Now you can use this lining however you like it, but I've cut my two pieces, six and a half by 10, because we're making the larger bag, but I'm gonna use the wrong side of the fabric as my right side. And there's a method to my madness that will be revealed at the end. So with that in mind, I'm gonna place this right side up onto my piece here. And, and I'm gonna use my little Kimberbell ruler here to measure a half an inch from that original top stitch edge there. And that's where I'm gonna line the edge of my piece up with that half an inch line because we want we want that to be above that placement line there. And now with our white thread, I'm simply gonna stitch this one. Now we can also use our expert tape to tape this into place so it doesn't shift around on us. And color number 14 is gonna be our cut line. So this line that's stitching, we have to do something very special to. So I'll be, after this, after this color is complete, I'm gonna take it over to the design table. Now this ruler is from the Kimberbell Orange Pop ruler set. And I'm just gonna take this and line it up on that cut line so that I can use my rotary cutter to just cut a clean, crisp line. I'm not removing anything from the hoop. I'm just cutting right on that line. So I'm just gonna use my scissors to extend that cut I just made about a half an inch on either side here. And it already is on that side. And I can peel that away. Okay, so now here is the 
precarious part. Oh my God, you're gonna love this part. It should be handled with kid gloves. We're gonna peel off our, our extra tape here and we can reuse it. And we're gonna slip this through the slit. Look at this, see? I'm slipping it through to the back side. Hoo hoo hoo. Very, very interesting business, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now we're gonna pull that nicely, covering that piece, and now we're gonna tape this into place. And yes, this is the, the lining right side, but I have used the opposite end of my fabric, and in just a moment, I can reveal why I'm doing that. All right, so once you have that taped and you've pulled it just enough so that you don't have any of the lining showing up there, if you really wanted to, you could use some tape. I like to tape the gap myself. That's just me. Mind the gap. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn it upside down and mind the gap on the other side because if we don't mind the gap, we might. Remember that? Okay, well. <sighs> All right, so there's our piece. Now we're ready for color number 15. Okay, so I didn't use an iron to press this. If you do use an iron, you cannot use steam or water because that will shrink the water soluble stabilizer, which is why I just taped instead of actually doing any pressing. So our last few colors here is the home stretch. So this stitch that we're gonna do now is a tack down to hold the lining into place. And now we're going to stitch a drawstring channel or casing. Our next step, we're gonna take this other outer piece here and we're gonna line it up and we're gonna extend it past the cut stabilizer. So here's our cut stabilizer and we want this piece to extend past that. We're going to stitch color number 17. So here we are, our hoop has been turned upside down. I am using the wrong side of my lining piece. So this is the right side. And so we have right sides together here. It is extending to match the top part of my fabric, which is just there. And now I'm gonna tape it into place so it doesn't wiggle around. So once you've got everything taped to the back, you'll return the machine, you'll return the hoop to the machine, and we're gonna stitch that final color number 18. Now this one has some weird areas that it's gonna stitch. It's gonna stitch the top here, then it's gonna leave openings for the drawstring, and then it's also gonna leave an opening on the side over here so that we can turn it right side out. All right, so we're in the home stretch now. I just need to trim, take all my tape off. All right, so then you're also gonna trim your little corners like this. And you wanna be careful to not actually cut that stitching line there. All right, so we can remove our hoop now. Don't need that. We cut it out. You saw where I told you to trim it. So it comes out like this. And after you get all the tape out and all of that good stuff and you trim your little corners like this, you're gonna turn it inside out where that opening was. So first, we're gonna turn it inside out just with the lining like this. And then the cool thing about this is remember that little bit that we had where we had to put it above the slit seam? Hang on. 
it's happening, it's coming, it's coming. And I had it all taped within an inch of its life. Well, you would take all that tape, peel it out, do all of that stuff, and there is the opening for a bag. It's like magic, honestly. So we have a couple of things to do here. I like to take this and fold it over. This is our little opening now after we turned it inside out. So I'm just gonna take that, after we're all done, I'm gonna take that over to the iron, press it down and use a little bit of fusible web to hold that into place. But the reason why I brought you here today, ladies and gentlemen, is I have my white thread threaded up on my machine. I've got just a standard number one foot on my 880 plus. You can use a quarter inch foot or whatever. But what I wanna do is turn my bag inside out or outside, right side out rather. And I want to stitch, I wanna continue my casing stitch around my piece because you just, I, I mean, the pattern does not call for this, but I think it would be a really nice touch to do. So I'm gonna take my expansion, my little insert out of my machine here that's down in the cabinet, and I'm gonna use the free arm to make this stitch. So it's a tight fit, but I think we can do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch with the folded edge, it is kind of bumped out a little bit from the front piece, but I'm gonna stitch with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way to the other side. So I'm going to tack, go to the other seam and tack, then I'm going to move it over so I start at this other seam here. Okay, so now we're going to shift this over. And go the other direction. So we're going to just move it la 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 okay so now we have to line it up in just the right spot and that seems to be right at that line there i believe that is the the one inch mark right there so now let's stitch reverse and continue to stitch and I'm just making sure that it slides nicely around this free arm. And reverse. And cut. Now this is an optional thing. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Gives you a nice little look on the back as well as the front. So here's our crocheted ribbon, which we're gonna feed through our piece and we have two equal pieces in size and I'm going to take it and feed it through this little elastic inserter like this and I'm going to start at one buttonhole end and we're going to feed that through until we get to the other side and then I'm going to slip this through to the other side in the back. I just kind of go one side at a time. Makes it a little bit easier for me. Okay, there's one side, and we're going to even them up. Like that. And now we're going to go in from this side now and do that through the other side. All right, so we're almost done. We just want to turn this inside out and fuse that little piece closed or do some hand sewing. Either way, we just need to close this little seam here in the middle of our bag. Oh, yeah. And I bet you guys wanted to know why I put the lining wrong side out. Well, once this is washed and dried, you're gonna see that dark pink coming through our butterfly. That's the secret. Oh, good Lord. These things are disgusting. But you know what? That little bag 
is absolutely adorable. So don't forget that you can always join our Kimberbell Society. It's not a subscription. You just decide, hey, I'd like to do it this month. And you say, sure, I'm going to sign up for this. So that's one thing. And then the other thing that I want you to be mindful of is that we have a YouTube channel and don't forget to check it out. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there, if you could, like, comment, and subscribe. But in the meantime, happy sewing and happy Mother's Day.